Chris made a comment to me, which is like, um, you know, I, I I need to come up with, and 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 this is not to undermine the extraordinary complexity to figure out the rules of a world and what those characters are and how you push edges and all that stuff. But when it when you're thinking about what could you do for the internet, he said to me this line in an earlier conversation was about what can I do with two actors and a card table. And the brilliance of that then is it's not about exploding bridges or how many dollars I have. If I can create something that special, and this is true across the board, this has nothing to do with the internet. This is just sheer raw storytelling. Mm -hmm. I mean, when 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 JF uh, Lawton uh, was my new client. On condition, he go write me a spec that I could work with, and then he turned in three thousand. That conversation was two men in a card table. That's basically mm -hmm. the conversation that we had. I said, I need a romance. I need it to take place in a room. I need it to have a clock, and I need to be able to make it for seven dollars. If literally all I had was one room or a couple of rooms, and not big name actors, I want to be able to whatever you write. I want to produce because I know how good you are. Um, so I don't want to be denied the opportunity, and of course, if it attracts more, whether it's more right. dollars, more, uh, high, you know, more bigger name talent, whatever the more is, so be it. Great. And that film literally went from Sundance uh, Production Lab to Vestron to New Regency. It kept failing forward. If thank God. It kept failing miserably. I mean, it was one car wreck after bankruptcy court. This that. Hey. It was the 405 on a bad day. But it, God bless it, failed uh, consistently until it found the right home and the right combination mm -hmm. of elements. But the story was always that story. It was his version of two men in a card table. Mm -hmm. That's how it was birthed into the world. So it's, it's really not about the medium or the delivery system or the budget even initially. It's about the sophistication and the creativity and the unique perspective and voice that you bring as a creator to that story that's going to, as you said, attract and be be like almost catnip where people right. say, yes, where otherwise uh, without a cash offer they might say no. Yeah, yeah. And also um, uh, boundaries, uh, uh, restraints. Uh, what am I looking for? Uh, what, what I told you was that uh, the thing at Disney was going to die and because um, they never pulled the trigger on any of their projects because of budget concerns. And I said, I want something so cheap that no one can say no because of the money. Yeah, you they would not, not be, like it. Right. You wanted but they, never to be denied over dollars. Right. And I said, well, the cheapest thing I know how to make, I think, is two people at a card table. Like, that's budget-wise possible. And then I grew the rules of the booth out of that. I grew the show from that concern. But I would say that it's constraints that often produce really terrific work. Um, I know that for the things I want to make on my own production end now, the, the miniseries I want to do and sell on iTunes and Amazon, I need concepts that I can that are the same way. I can say, what are the constraints budget-wise? What are the production concerns that are my boundaries that I can't step over that are cheap enough to make this thing because I have no one financing it but myself. Now I believe I'm going to pull that off, but it means accepting that boundary, accepting those constraints, and working within that. But if you really delve into your constraints, you often find amazing things. And I think sometimes the filmmaking today is a little bit off because you can do anything, and so no one has to make choices about what really matters. It all becomes just equally the same thing. 